Hey folks, happy Vita, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I make videos about a lot of different things, and this month I am making a video every single day. So far, so good. <laughs> uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Harry Potter and about being a Harry Potter fan in the Christian church because I am both of those things. I was probably around 13, like 12 or 13 when I started reading the Harry Potter books and I was going to a Christian school at the time. Without getting too deep into it, it's very controversial. Um, and the school that I was going to was no exception, but they did allow you to read Harry Potter if you wanted to. They didn't, it couldn't, not like they could have really stopped you if you were reading stuff outside of school, but they allowed uh, Harry Potter books to be included on the school's like reading list and reading program. The thing that's always been interesting to me is how vehemently uh, churches have opposed Harry Potter and um, what some of their arguments are. So I am going to right now go into the two biggest uh, points that I have heard people use against Harry Potter books and why I don't think they're good enough reasons to ban Harry Potter from all possible discussion. The first argument that I hear a lot is kind of just a one word argument and people just scream witchcraft and like run away. <laughs> um, so first of all, that's not a very developed argument, but the argument that they're trying to make is that witchcraft is not something that we should be encouraging kids to learn about, it's not something that uh, they want their kids to learn about, and it's just uh, not something that we should be encouraging any interest in whatsoever. So my counter to that is, well, a couple of things. First of all, uh, the magic in Harry Potter is not the same as, like, actual Wiccan magical practices. And to be fair, I haven't done a whole lot of research on this, but to say that it's pure witchcraft and then dismiss it completely just tells me that you haven't even tried to read the books or you haven't really given it a chance at all because it's very clear within story even when I was a kid that like this is not real this is a magical like fantasy world where there are a lot of things that are based in the real world but it's also very much so a fantastical version of the real world. I think that the Harry Potter series and most books in general teach us through narrative moral lessons and moral ideas. And those aren't necessarily involving any sort of witchcraft or any sort of uh, fantasy elements whatsoever. Life lessons and uh, moral lessons that can be taught through this world of magic and fantasy. The second argument that I hear sometimes in churches is that Harry Potter and a book about this fantasy magical world uh, includes and encounters ghosts and dark spirits and kind of similar throwback to the first one that we don't want to be encouraging this exploration into this darker realm, metaphorically opening this door into a spiritual realm and a dark spiritual realm that 
uh, our kids don't understand. A couple of different points that I have here. Um, and it sort of depends on what perspective the person trying to present this argument is coming from. Because some people say this argument of like, oh, we don't want to be opening this door to dark spiritual things that don't exist. Um, and to that I would say, if you don't think they exist, then why are you really worried about them uh, influencing your perception of the world? On the other side, people are saying, I don't want I don't want to open myself up or my kids or my family up to this world of uh, this supernatural world of dark spirits that I do believe exists. And as a counterpoint to that, I would say that if you do believe that the supernatural exists, then it's all the more reason to be aware of the power that it can hold and the different perceptions of it in culture and in the world. Furthermore, if you believe that the supernatural does exist, why are you letting a kid's book, even a classic kid's book, decide how you feel about it and how you want to react to it? Like, that doesn't really make sense to me, to be honest. As a more generalized counter-argument to anyone who says that Harry Potter is uh, inherently bad and uh, shouldn't be read or talked about in churches, uh, the Harry Potter books and the series in general, it's a narrative story that ends with the lesson that love conquers all. That is the message of Harry Potter, that is the message that, at least the message that I read into Harry Potter. And in a lot of ways, that message is a really similar message to the message of the church. I'm not saying that, like, Harry Potter is Jesus, but I do think that inherently in narrative there is a tendency to follow a salvation type message or a redemption story and that's very clearly at least to me the story that is being told in Harry Potter. I'm gonna also put a disclaimer on here that there are I'm sure more arguments against Harry Potter and just because I got a lot out of the stories and I understood it to be a message in this sort of positive way, it doesn't mean that someone else couldn't read the same story and find a different message or find a different narrative. It just means that this is the one that I found and I think that it's given me a lot of hope and a lot of good things. All I'm saying, I suppose, is to give the series a chance. It is fiction and it's a children's story, so you don't have to like it, you don't have to agree with me, but you can also give it a shot and see what you think for yourself. And if you disagree with me, then I'd be interested in hearing why. I am interested in hearing if there are arguments that I've left out. I know there are arguments that I've left out, but if there are arguments that I've left out that you want me to address, then I'd love to. I am a huge Harry Potter fan, and I happen to be a Christian, and I don't see those things as opposing each other, but that doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't.
so that's the end of today. Uh, happy Vita. I hope you get a chance to do something that you love today, and I will see you tomorrow.